Hello and happy holidays. Welcome to Open Line. I'm Starlene Stringer. This is the season for celebrating and we have some tips for making sure you are safe and healthy. We will also help you get started with those New Year's resolutions. Our guests today are from the Parkland Health and Hospital System. Dr. Shannon Rickner is a toxicologist and emergency physician with the North Texas Poison Center. Megan Jardine is a registered dietitian at Parkland and Cynthia Castillo is a social worker at the Irving Health Center. Dr. Rickner, let's definitely start with you because there's so much to talk about today. Absolutely. And one of the important things we need to talk about is safety. Mm -hmm. um, at the Poison Center, what types of calls actually increase this time of year? We have a lot of accidental exposures, a lot of kids that get into things that they don't necessarily have access to the rest of the year. Mm. We see a lot of, there are a lot of toys that are available on Christmas mornings and it's all unwrapped. There are all sorts of little parts that they can swallow, all sorts of decorative items around the house that are not necessarily around the rest of the year. We see all sorts of calls coming in. I could imagine you would. Yeah, I have a four-year-old who oh just my. had a birthday party and I think every package we had had something that was less than one inch in size Absolutely. and I'm like, this can't be safe. Absolutely. Well, next I want to ask you, Megan, everywhere you go this time of year, we're all tempted with goodies. I mean, delicious cakes and cookies and pies. She's like, mm-hmm. Besides adding to our waistline, they can really be concerning to diabetics too, right? Yes, people with diabetes really need to uh, watch what they're eating, not only during the holidays, but all year long. And uh, one thing that they should do um, is put healthy foods front and center in their diets and focus on eating high fiber foods. And I always like to use the color of the nutrition rainbow. Um, and this time of year, actually, a lot of the foods we do eat are from the rainbow, like um, pumpkin and sweet potato, um, green beans, uh, Brussels sprouts, cranberries. These foods are very healthy. It's how you prepare them that are really important. Mm, and when you say that, you say how you prepare them because sometimes when you think say things like sweet potatoes, people go, oh yeah, we love sweet potato pie. Right, <laughs> sweet potatoes right. covered in sugar and marshmallows right. and that's not what you're talking about when you say healthy sweet potatoes. So, Sometimes you have to just take control and either find new recipes or you can always modify the recipes you already have but by reducing the amount of butter, re reducing the amount of sugar that you use, uh, maybe use pecans on top instead of the marshmallows, mm. or if you can't go without the marshmallows, just use fewer. Um, so it's, it's reducing the amount of unhealthy foods, but finding new recipes as well. And there's okay. so many recipes out there and I brought some to share with you today. Okay. Oh good, well I love how you said maybe replace the marshmallows with pecans because my mind clicked and went, what do you mean with? We put both. Oh right, <laughs> so, yeah. Thank okay. you for making me aware of that. We should not do that. Why is sugar so appealing to us? Well, it, it's not just sugar. Sugar, um, fat, salt, uh, does trigger a pleasure response in the brain. And mm. companies know that, and a lot of our processed food, um, they, companies have scientists that actually formulate products so that they have just the right amount of added sugar, just the right amount of added salt, just the right amount of added fat that makes it taste good. And it's not like you have an addiction like a chemical addiction. It's this low-grade addiction, and it makes us go back for more, and consequently, 60% of the calories we consume is from these processed foods. Oh, wow. Uh, particularly, um, you know, packaged cookies, um, prepared meals, uh, even cheese has mm. uh, casomorphines that make uh, us a little addicted to cheese. And cheese is the number one source of saturated fat and sodium in our diet as well. While you were describing all that to us, we were seeing pictures of these great looking desserts right. with the sugar just pouring down. So it's good to have you in our mind saying, uh, 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 that's not necessarily what you need. Well, you can always, like, I brought a little platter here to show you. Um, put this, something like this out uh -huh. um, before your meals or as your appetizer. Fresh vegetables, um, this easy bean dip, it's called easy bean dip, it's just black beans, one cup of salsa, a half a teaspoon of cumin. I put this in a food processor. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a food processor, you can just mash it up and make it a little chunkier. But beans are really great, especially for people who are trying to lose weight or people who have diabetes. The fiber in the beans help regulate blood glucose levels. 
And the fiber also helps you not overeat. It helps um, you have a little more control. So it's one way to take control. Put something like this out. I tell you, my son will uh, come and munch on the fresh uh, vegetables. Kids will eat it. Adults will eat it. It really does look good, but I have to say when you have that out there and then you have the option of the cheesecake or cupcakes or pies, you have to have willpower. And so that's what I want to talk to you about, Cynthia. Do some people have, would you say, more willpower than others? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think people are able to find the willpower a little easier than others, um, whether it's because of stress or finances or whatever the case may be. But uh, yes, it's not outside of the scope of something that can be attained. Well, is it a skill that we can actually work on? Definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so what do you recommend? How can people go about doing that? If you have that option of taking the cake or the pie or this vegetable tray that really does look delicious, how do we make ourselves choose the one that's healthier for us? <laughs> well, <clears throat> when it comes to maintaining your diet over the holidays, which we all struggle with, um, you have to really keep in mind what your long-term goal is. N maybe set a short-term goal for the holiday season. Um, you can have a little bit of the pie and the sweet potato, but you also want to incorporate some vegetables and some fruit. If you, you're not going to commit to 100% clean diet a day, you can commit to maybe 25% um, in order to get yourself to the point where you can actually find that willpower. You have to find your internal locus for motivation. What is going to motivate you to actually make that good decision when you come to the food table? Hmm. It's all different for everybody. Mm -hmm. For me, it might be controlling high blood pressure. Um, for somebody else, it might be controlling diabetes or m saving money. Um, or getting into a really, really cute bikini come summertime, right? A wedding. <laughs> mm -hmm. Something like that. Yes. Thank you. Now, Dr. Rickner, you touched on this a bit. You talked about uh, decorations at this time of the year being yeah. a concern because they can be harmful to small children. And so are there particular types of decorations that we should stay away from if we do have small children in our homes? Well, there are a lot of myths that are out there. One of the ones that, one of the plants over time that is just absolutely beautiful and has really gotten a bad rap. I love the poinsettia plant. Me it is too big, it is bright, it is everything about the holiday season. And over the years, people have decided that, oh, it must be very, very bad, it's dangerous, it's going to be bad for kids, it's bad for pets, everyone's going to nominate. It's really quite bitter. I can't imagine anyone wanting to sit down and chew on the number <laughs> of plants that it would take for it to be toxic. It just doesn't seem palatable at all. Um, a lot of the other plants, the mistletoes, those can be a little bit more dangerous and a lot of states have cut back on the availability of live and fresh mistletoes. We always worry about the ingredients that are put into the preservation in the water, the preservers in the water for the Christmas trees because mm. some of those can be dangerous to, especially to little ones and little pets who are so thirsty. They go and they always drink out of the, uh, out of the tree water. Um, they've made safety measures to make those less toxic as well. So when you say that, I always have had the artificial tree. I yeah. cheat a bit. So if I were going to visit someone, they may mm -hmm. have it in their tree. Absolutely. So I need to know, what exactly is it? Is it like when you get flowers from a floral shop and it has that little packet of stuff you pour in it? Is Absolutely. it similar to that? It, it is. And a lot of them have the chemicals and the fertilizers that a tree would be able to get out in its natural environment mm -hmm. so that it's drawn up with the water to be able to keep those leaves nice and fresh. May not be so great for the little pets that are drinking out of that bowl. One of the interesting things that we've been seeing is, as a decorative item, are the water beads that people are putting into their floral oh, yeah. arrangements down in the bottom of the vase. You add a little water, it plumps up, it looks like a beautiful jelly oh, arrangement. Yes. Lots of colors, it's fantastic. But that being said, a little one thinks that it looks like candy, so pretty yeah. soon they're grabbing it, they're putting it in their mouth. Fortunately, not terribly dangerous. Hmm. It's already swollen up to its big size. It may cause a little bit of a blockage in the belly, but in terms of its toxicity, pretty darn safe. Okay, so that's what's the case with that. But you talked about poinsettias not being as bad yeah. um, as some people may think. 
or more kids not wanting them because they're so bitter <laughs> to keep <laughs> eating. But you may have a child like mine who oh, thinks, oh, you know, lotion or hand sanitizer. Anything. Right, yes. it tastes great. So I have to watch all that stuff. Right. So if you do have a child that wow. decides to eat a few plants and says, hmm, this is good, or keeps eating and you don't see it quick enough to do anything, uh -huh. what could happen? What, what would happen to that child and what should we do? Most of the time, the effects are just going to be limited to the belly. Okay. They're going to get nauseated, they're going to throw up, they're going to have a little bit of GI distress, maybe some diarrhea. But generally speaking, if you're ever worried at all about the toxicity associated with anything that the little one gets into, grab a hold of the package and call the Poison Center. They have online resources to the toxicity profiles of so many different chemicals, so many different drugs, so many different just random things like water beads. They have immediate access to all of that information and they'll be able to guide you in terms of whether it's dangerous and you need to go to the ER or if it's something that you can stay home and just keep an eye on the little one and take the stuff and put it up and out of the way. I can personally tell you they are very helpful when you call that line because I've done it in panic many <laughs> times. Okay, just three, but that's enough. Okay, right? that's enough. <laughs> okay, moving on to you, Megan. I have another question. When we are making food choices, what should we know about the difference between simple and complex carbohydrates? Well, typically simple carbohydrates are refined carbohydrates like sugar, uh, could be high fructose corn syrup, it could be white flour. Mm -hmm. So. Um, those would be ingredients that are in like the processed and packaged foods I was talking about earlier or your cakes and cookies and even the desserts we make at home um, are the simple sugars and those are the ones that raise your blood sugar and then the complex carbohydrates are the ones that come from whole grains and legumes and uh, fruits and vegetables and those are typically much healthier they're not refined they're in their natural state they're high in vitamins and minerals they're high in antioxidants and phytochemicals. And so that's why we want to focus on eating those foods because not only are they um, going to help us have more control when we are faced with um, a dessert or something like that, if we are eating those foods, then um, we're also getting those uh, nutrients that protect the body. It, it enhances the immune system, so uh, we're less likely to get sick. and. Um, Having three, grain, three whole grains a day, for example, can reduce your blood pressure. Wow. Uh, it can enhance your insulin sensitivity, so it helps uh, glucose control. That would be like oatmeal for breakfast, and when you have lunch, make sure you have, use, choose whole wheat bread, um, maybe have brown rice for dinner. That would be three whole grains right there. Wonderful. So. I'm glad you said that because a lot of people try to just completely avoid <laughs> carbohydrates sometime right. when they're trying to, you know, diet or lose weight. And it's important to know that there are good carbs. Right. So thanks there for are. telling us that. Um, I also want to ask you, Cynthia, what makes it so hard to stick with New Year's resolutions? <laughs> you get the tough ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, what makes it hard is essentially our lack of willpower. <laughs> um, we, ha we have a way of celebrating the new year, but our physical self doesn't really know that. It's still just another day. And so it's kind of easy in our minds to say, well, I didn't start on January 1, but I can maybe do January 2. Um, uh, it, it's just a, one of those things that is um, either a personality trait or something that you can work on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some of us are usually pretty good for maybe about a month or so, whether mm -hmm. it's food that you have a New Year's resolution for, or it could be you know, exercising. But then after that, sometimes people kind of revert back. Yeah, do. What do you do after that? Just get back on it and make yourself? The, the best thing one can really do is to set a, a, a really smart goal. You really want to set a goal that you can actually achieve. You don't want to wake up January 1 and say, okay, <laughs> now binge time is over. We're going to get started with the 10Ks and all that good stuff. Well, that's not the way we work. We have to kind of inch our way towards our ultimate either fitness goal or um, diet goal. So we can start with, say, if you are morbidly obese and it's difficult for you to walk to your front door, mm -hmm. try walking to your front door just the front door. Don't imagine yourself walking a mile at first. Yeah. Um, setting attainable goals is very important. That's my number one recommendation. Thank you. Okay, so we need another recommendation from you, Dr. Oh Rickner. <laughs> um, this is gonna be about parents and children. Again, what is the best overall advice you can give parents to protect their children this time of year? 
It's so easy for little ones to get in trouble. Um, those of us who have either fur babies or little kids at home know how quickly when you just look away for a second, they found the one thing that you couldn't even possibly imagine they would get into. Mm -hmm. And I think this goes along with my New Year's resolution is it's my resolution to kind of see the world through their eyes. Mm -hmm. I want to get down on their level and take a look from their height as they're toddling around or crawling around and just see what's down there because I think from an adult's height looking down, we don't necessarily see that. Um, I also would like the people that are coming into my home to kind of be aware of that and say, oh my goodness, there's your purse. I know, let's set it up so that the little ones don't have easy access to maybe the pill bottle that you need to have with you. And to just be mindful of the safety of the little ones at home, even when we're going to places where they might not necessarily have thought of that themselves. Good advice. And speaking of just being aware, I want to come to you next, Megan, and talk about things that we can do to avoid uh, weight gain or unhealthy eating at this time of year. What do you recommend? Well, I think I've already said focusing on the healthy foods, putting mm -hmm. those first, and also planning. You know, sometimes we don't uh, think about what we're going to eat until we eat. And so that's one of the things I always work with um, my patients when I do nutrition counseling is to have them make a plan. So what are you gonna eat today? And what are you gonna eat tomorrow? And make sure you have those healthy foods on hand. Uh, for example, having these vegetables already cut up and cleaned and cut up and put in your refrigerator, um, having fresh fruit ready to go so you can just grab it and eat it. Uh, know that you're gonna have what you're gonna have for dinner tonight so that you don't make the decision when you're hungry. So uh, making the decision after you eat a meal what you're gonna eat at the next meal is always a good choice. And then just, you know, be reasonable with yourself. Um, you know, another thing people can do is write down what they eat. And that just builds awareness and that helps with the meal planning as well. Drink lots of water, get lots of rest. Uh, sometimes when we don't get enough rest and it's a very stressful time of year, it's a lot more difficult to make healthy decisions. Hmm. Very true. Okay, back to you, Cynthia. We're going to pick up where we left off, okay. talking about these resolutions. <coughs> so once we are successful with our New Year's resolutions, how do we make them a habit? You have to practice it like everything else. It's something you have to have to, must do for yourself. Um, you're going to have to find either 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour um, to engage in an activity. You're, you, it's just something you're going to have to decide, yes, I am that important and I'm going to do this for me, mm -hmm. whether it's to fit into that bikini or if it's, again, I don't know, getting married or whatever the case may be. You have to find your motivation and truly commit to being the person that you want and you, that you actually see in vision for you and, and kind of set your path that way. Another thing you can do is get a, an accountability partner. Hmm. That works really well for me. Um, if, if I don't get up for some reason, you have somebody calling you saying, you know, hey, are you getting up? Uh, it's time for your mile run. Uh, or have an accountability group. Um, have a neighbor maybe go on a walk with you. Um, accountability is very important. Yeah, let's see. I think those two are probably the, the main things you want to focus on for yourself and also having an accountability partner and actually preparing um, for things. not only the things that you're going to get out of it, but mm -hmm. also prepare yourself for setbacks. You're going to have the time where, oh, I really want that burger. Okay, go ahead and have the burger, but get back on track just as soon as you can. Great advice. And so, Megan, I want to come back to you because we talked about diabetes a little bit. Um, for people right now that are getting those invitations in the mail about different parties going on, what do you tell diabetics about how they can prepare when they're attending these parties? Because everybody's eating all the stuff they want to. What do you tell diabetics to do? Well, there's several things they can do. First of all, they can uh, offer to bring a dish. Um, it doesn't have to be this plate of, I keep <laughs> referring to the vegetables, but it could be a healthy appetizer. It mm -hmm. could be a vegetable side dish. It could be a salad. Um, it could be some fruit for dessert. Uh, the other thing is when you go to a party, don't go hungry. Make sure you have something to eat, like maybe a healthy snack before you go, and make sure it's a snack that has a lot of fiber in it, like either 
you know, the beans are really high in fiber, whole grains and vegetables um, and even fruit all have fiber. And if we eat some of those foods before we go to a party, we're less apt to binge. Uh, drink lots of water. Um, I know that uh, there's a lot, there's alcohol also served at uh, a lot of these parties. Right. And, and people with diabetes need to work with their physician on how to plan uh, drinking alcohol, how much they can uh, have, and what the interactions are with their medications, uh, especially if they're on insulin, and they may be on multiple medications as well that um, alcohol will interact with. So um, they should try to drink more water while they're doing that as well to take care of themselves and put mm -hmm. themselves first. Yeah, you know, it's interesting we're talking about this, and it was exactly this time last year, it was right around Christmas, a little closer to then, that I was visiting with my brother who lives in Seattle, and long story short, we had gone to Canada, and we were talking to my mom, and he kept licking like inside his mouth, and he kept saying, my mouth is so dry, my mouth is so dry, I can't, you know, he kept drinking oh, water. Wow. And he went to the doctor when we got back, like two days later, he found out he was diabetic, never knew. None of us have diabetes, but my brother does, and he had to start taking insulin injections, had no idea. And he's bodybuilder, workout, eating right, mm. had no clue. So I'm so glad you're offering this information for us. Now, I want to come back to Dr. Rickner and pick up on this thing with these kids, or yes. it could be an adult, or maybe you're a caregiver mm -hmm. of an elderly person. Um, if someone does need to get help, they, you know, decide to eat all the plants and flowers in the house oh or my. eat something really bad. Or they get into a medication bottle exactly. that no one really thought exactly. about. Exactly. So okay. how do you know when to call the poison center and when to call 911? I think mother's instincts are absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, mothers know when there's something different about their baby or about their loved one. Some of the most common signs that we see, usually everything hits the belly first, the nausea, the vomiting, um, other issues with the belly. But that being said, the most dangerous things can happen when you start noticing changes in the way someone is behaving, so uh, changes in the way they're thinking, the way that they're speaking, the same way that you would for a stroke or another emergent condition. It's when something's just off about the personality, that's generally one of the cl earliest signs that something is dangerous enough that you need to call the emergency department, you need to call EMS to come, the ambulance to come and help you get there if you're not able to get there yourself. Now everyone's been taught since they were little, 911, 911. So when we <laughs> don't need to call 911, but we do want to call the Poison Center, what number do we call? It is a bit of a long one, but the good news is that it's a free number. It's a 1-800 number. Good. It's 1-800-222-1222. And I should have that memorized, and every time <laughs> I switch up the numbers, but I'm pretty sure it's 222-1222. It's on the screen, yes. One, two, two, two. There you it is. You got it. That is correct. <laughs> and so when you dial that number, mm -hmm. what questions should you be prepared to answer? They're going to ask for some background information. They're going to ask for if you're able to provide it some specifics about exactly what was eaten or what was splashed on the skin or the eyes or the face. And the more details you have to give them about that, the better. They're going to want to know where you are. They're going to want to know a little bit of information about the patient because a a little kid's an exposure in a little kid is different than an exposure in an, an older adult just by virtue of the fact that they're smaller. Um, so one pill may be very, very dangerous in a child, whereas it may not be so dangerous in an adult. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're able to have the specific ingredients or the specific brand of any of the store-bought items, that's fantastic. Immediate release versus extended release for medications. The more detailed information, especially the time that that person got into whatever they got into. Mm -hmm. All of these are very, very crucial information, pieces of information to really allow them to use their medical training, their nursing training and background, their pharmacy training and background to provide as detailed and important information about what to expect and when you need to get more help. And I remember from my calls that <laughs> after they do that, I kept thinking, well, am I going to be like this bad mother report because oh, they ask no. you so many questions, but I didn't right? receive anything that, you know, <laughs> said, like you're getting written up. So right. it's I a would little scary when you first call. Absolutely. And I would never want that to be a deterrent to mm -hmm. someone. This is absolutely not a reflection of skill as a parent. If anything, it just ex it's a statement of how amazingly 
good a parent you are to recognize that this may be something dangerous and to want to seek help to s make sure that you're doing what's best for your child. Well, thank you. That's reassuring to all the moms who've had of to call course. that number. Um, Cynthia, I want to come back to you with a question for just a minute. For those who have not been to the Irving Health Center, what services do you provide there? Basic medical care, um, general physician services, which include physicals. Um, we have a, mam a mammogram mobile unit, which goes over to Irving Health Center mm -hmm. um, one to two times a month. Okay. Uh, we have an x-ray unit. We have uh, lab work. Um, we're working towards getting a dental clinic inside again. We also have a, a center inside of Irving Health Center, which is uh, specifically for women and children. Um, there's, let's see, social work services. There's dietitian services. We also have um, a mental health counselor who can engage patients with some short-term counseling if they need. Um, mm -hmm. We have crisis intervention for the community. Uh, we encourage all members of the community to come and seek out assistance if they do uh, require it. Even if they don't uh, believe that we might have it, we would have an answer for them. You definitely have a lot to offer there. Uh, Dr. Rickner, I want to come back to you for a moment because something that's been brought to my attention is a term called lookalikes. Uh, what exactly does that mean? So it's, it's pretty much what it sounds like. They are things that can be dangerous that look very much like other things that are not. For example, some medications look very much like candy. Mm. The packaging of those medications, the uh, even the color and the size of the pills look very, very similar to candies like Skittles that everyone, beautiful sweet candy mm. that all the kids want. Um, and if the kids get into it inadvertently thinking that they are candy, it can be very dangerous. Mm. One of the most common ones we've been hearing a lot about lately are the laundry detergent pods. Because they're small, they have bright colors, bright patterns, but in a toddler, even one laundry detergent pod, because it's so concentrated, can cause all sorts of problems if that hits the belly and then aspirates into the lungs. So we always look at these products and say, because windshield washer fluid may look very much like Gatorade, keep it in the original package, keep it in the original bottle. Don't put it into a Gatorade bottle or a water bottle or some other sports drink bottle and think that little kids won't grab it and think, ooh, blue juice, it looks delicious, <laughs> I'm going to drink it. Oh boy, so thank yeah. you for that, because we have to pay attention to it. Absolutely. I mean, I've seen some of the examples they had up there on the screen for us, and mm -hmm. I thought, wow, you don't really think about it until you point it's it out like so that, and you close. go, it does look very similar mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. Okay, so right after we do all the Christmas present openings yes. and all that stuff, and then <laughs> get prepared for that, uh, I want to come to you, Megan, we're almost out of time, but I know a lot of people are getting ready to make their New Year's resolutions, mm -hmm. and so um, what kind of healthy advice do you have? When we make those New Year's resolutions, what would you like to recommend we consider? Well, you have to consider not only the result. A lot of times people say, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Well, you can't just lose 10 pounds. There's specific things you have to do every day to get to that goal. So think of behavioral goals, like what would help you get to that goal? Is it walking? Um, maybe you need to start a walking program and walk 30 minutes a day. Um, it may be eating more fruits and vegetables. It may be portion control. It may be cleaning out your cupboards and cleaning out the refrigerator and getting rid of some of those uh, holiday treats that we've been talking about that are no longer necessary. Um, well, not necessarily will help you get to your goal. Uh, one thing I did last year is I went to a shelter and I adopted a dog mm -hmm. and I walk the dog now and so I'm walking uh, twice a day, whether I like it or not. <laughs> and uh, that has helped me, you know, keep my weight off and stay healthy. Very so. good. And Cynthia, the Irving Health Center, you gave us some descriptions about what you do there, what you have to offer. For those who are not familiar with the location, where exactly is it? 1800 North Britain, 75061. Awesome. <laughs> and if someone should have to go there, what can they expect? You just go in and you go to the desk. What do you need to do? You do have to apply for our Parkland Financial Assistance Program, um, which does come in handy for persons whose um, insurance doesn't cover 100% of their services. And if they feel they would qualify, they are more than welcome to attempt to come in and, and qualify for those services. So that would be the first initial step. 
Okay, well, thank you all so much for answering all these questions so and good. for Megan making us all hungry. That looks delicious <laughs> well, there, dig in. <laughs> but it's a good choice. So we will in just a minute. Thank you all so much for being here. And thank you for watching. I'm Starlene Stringer. Please be sure to join us on our next show. The Irving Police Department will be here to help us protect ourselves from financial crimes, such as identity theft. That's coming up on Thursday, January 12th at 1.30 p.m. So if you have questions, please email them to ICTN at cityofirving.org and we'll get them answered on the next edition of Open Line. We'll see you then.